Hey there, I got five essential RV tips for you today, so don't go anywhere. Hey there, welcome back. I am Dr. Dave, the RV dummy. Yes, I am a dummy, but I've got some information for you that you might want to hear. Five essential RV tips that you need to know about. So before I get started, I just want to take a second to thank you so much for being here, for being a subscriber. By the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you press the button there and for being part of our community. We're growing a little bit every day. I don't want too big. I want our community to stay the right size where I can still respond to everybody, including your comment, suggestion, whatever you might have. So thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, make sure you click like, make sure you make a comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share with friends, etc., etc., etc. Let's get right into this today. Five essential tips that you need to know as an RVer. Now the first one, again, these are not in any particular order. They're all five are very important. The first one is if you have not yet purchased an RV, I'm going to recommend that you buy the smallest RV that you think you can be comfortable in. And the reason for that is the larger the RV, generally, not always, but generally it's more expensive, especially when you get into some of those humongous loaded class A rigs. But not only that, but the larger, uh, it's going to be more difficult for you to travel into different areas and different places. So like if you're only going to an RV park, to an RV campground, and you're going there for the season, you're going to drive there and plug in and you're there for good and you're not moving around, then yeah, larger is okay. But if you're going to be driving around all the time, going to different places, parking in different areas, going to national parks, state parks, places where sometimes you need to actually like fit in, then a smaller rig really does work out better. That's one of the reasons when Yoko and I weighed the advantages and disadvantages of different types of rigs, that's one of the reasons we settled in on a Class B. And we have a Class B Pleasure Way XLTS. We love it. Now, sometimes, yes, sometimes it feels a little bit small when we're in there. I mean, but the bed folds down and it's a king size bed. We have an actual um, bathroom. You can, not one of those bathrooms, it's like in the hallway that if you're on the toilet, people can walk in by. No, it's, it's actually a private closed bathroom. We have a full kitchen, microwave, everything we would need, but it's just small. And admittedly, sometimes we have to dance around each other if we're trying to pass each other in the hallway, something like that. But We've gotten used to it and we really like it. Now, would a little bit bigger be better? Maybe, but we're very happy with a Class B. But when you're purchasing one, just get the smallest one that you think you can be comfortable in. Don't get one that you think you're going to be just miserable in. I'm not saying that, but the smallest size that you think you will be totally fine in. That's number one. Number two, very, very, very important. Well, these are all important. I wouldn't have it on my list of five unless they weren't important. But, um, Slow down. Slower is better. Now, I've only, I've personally only have about two years of experience with RVing, but two years is a lot. You can learn a, a tremendous amount. And I learned that when you go slow and you don't have to, you don't, you're not trying to reach another destination every single day, but you stop and you look around and you enjoy things and you don't have to move, 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 but you just kind of have fun. I, I really think that is the best way to RV because I think if you don't go slow, it's going to add a lot of stress um, to your life. And let's face it, the reason that we're out there in our rigs, in our RVs, is because we want to enjoy, we want to look, we want to smell the coffee, so to speak. And that's why I just, I found that in all aspects of my life, I just think slowing down is just better. It just feels better to slow down. Slow down. Don't rush. Have fun. Number three is when you're planning your drive time for the day or after, if for a full trip, whatever it might be, when you're planning your, the amount of time you want to be on the road going from one destination to another destina destination, do not trust the time that Google Maps tells you 
that it, it's gonna take because it's gonna be wrong with an RV. With a car, it's pretty accurate. With an RV, there are a lot of things that come into play and we're just, we're just going slower. And the stops take longer. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, when, we take, when we stop for fuel, if there's a truck stop, I like to go in and just, and just kinda kick back and look around and see what's going on. And, and by the way, stopping at a Walmart for five to 10 minutes is quite impossible. A five to 10 minute stop at a Walmart turns out to be 30 to 45 to an hour. So <laughs> that, that's okay. It's all right, but don't trust Google Maps time. So no, here's my rule of thumb. What I do is add about 25% um, to the time. So for example, if you're going from point A to point B and Google Maps is telling you that it's gonna take you four hours, add about 25%, so a fourth of that, so a fourth of four hours is one hour. So, so instead of four hours, it's probably gonna, it, it more realistically will take you five hours, maybe even more. So just be very fair when you judge, because what you don't wanna see happen is you don't wanna see yourself driving into the wee hours of the night because you, you knew you could make it to this next destination. Oh, I'm, I'm just, oh, I'm so close, it's not difficult. Or, um, you know, you get to a campground and, and, and the office is closed and you have to make phone calls to get your site. You, just, again, slow down, don't overdo it. You don't have to drive 18 hours in a day to get to the next destination. I like to, generally, I don't like to go any more than four hours on the road, four hours of actual drive time. That seems to be, I mean, we've done, we do go longer, but, but I think four hours is kind of the sweet spot, at least for me and for Yoko and for Boo Boo, our cat, of course. Um, Number four, learn this the hard way. Don't overpack. Don't bring a lot of stuff. You don't need a ton of stuff with you. Just, I mean, it's, it's not uncommon for me to wear the same clothes over and over. And we, you just, I find that, you know, again, it's, it's all feng shui. And, and I, I feel like if I have too much stuff around me in my life, and even outside of RVing, this relates to life itself, too much stuff just, Again, it gets you a little more stressed. You don't need it all. Bring the minimal amount of stuff that you think you're gonna need. Look, what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is you forgot something, that you didn't bring something that you should have brought. You stop off at a Walmart and you buy the damn thing. And what's, what's the big deal? It's not, it's not that big of a deal. I'd much rather err on the side of being, um, um, of not bringing a lot of stuff. That's, that's what I wanted to say. I couldn't think of the word, you know? <laughs> okay, number five. Uh, I learned this, again, luckily not firsthand, really, but um, when we were just recently driving across the country from Maryland to Utah, um, number five, let me tell you what it is first. It's, it's don't drive in bad weather or limit or, or be very careful driving in bad weather. I, I've got a rule that I just won't drive in the bad weather. I, I'll stop, I'll stop for the day. I don't care if it means staying somewhere, even staying in a hotel, hunker down at a hotel till the bad weather stops. I don't care. My life and my rig are very important to me, especially my life. But um, fairly recently, we were driving across the country. We were going through, I think it was, where were we? We were outside of, um, I wanna say outside of North Platte. I think it's called North Platte, Iowa. And it was a real windy, cold day, and snow was, it wasn't snowing, but snow was, it was so windy, snow was blowing across the road. And we noticed um, at least two times within, within 30 minutes of each other, the two times I saw two RV rigs totally um, blown off the road. I didn't see it happen, but I saw the, after, the aftermath of it. Blown off the road, or somehow ran off the road and totally turned over and it was just a total, total, total mess. I can't even imagine, I mean, I pray that nobody got hurt in either of these instances, but again, within, with a ton of wind and some rain and some snow in a very short amount of time, I saw two horrible, horrible accidents. Um, not only do you risk your life, you jeopardize your life, but if you, if you turn over and your rig gets demolished like that, it's just, all the stuff you've got in it, and all just everything that goes, it's like a house on wheels. It's not just a vehicle, but it's a home on wheels. So you, you gotta go, you've gotta worry about so much stuff after that fact. So again, it all comes down to slow down. If it's bad weather, really bad wind, really bad rain, uh, or worse, snow, ice, I just, I just don't go out in it. It's not worth it to me, it's not fun, it's stressful. Why do it? You might be different. Maybe you like to. Maybe you're more adventurous, and maybe you like to um, 
drive through bad. I don't even like to drive in bad weather with my regular cars, let alone let alone my my um. And my I've got I only got a class B. I can imagine driving like a big you've got a big fifth wheel driving in heavy heavy wind. That that's got to be awful. It just so save it for the good weather, delay trips or stop for a little while in bad weather. Those are my five. That's all I got today. I hope it really helps you. I've gotten a lot of comments that um, I'm just, my, my videos here are just very straightforward, fun, to the point, and very, very helpful. And that's all I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to, um, again, build a nice community here where we can help each other. That's why when you comment um, after the fact, um, that helps a lot more people than you would ever believe, too, because a lot of people are reading all of the comments. So let's stay tight knit community. Thanks so much for being with me. I really appreciate you. I, I totally do. And I'll see you pretty soon on the next video. See you on the road, too. I'm Dr. Dave, the RV Dummy. <laughs>